All right, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to be back, uh, at least virtually, to uh, start the third party panel. We start off with Icon 3D Labs, established uh, 2021. Uh, they're a vendor here at the show uh, this weekend, and they're selling kits. Uh, you can see uh, an upgrade kit for uh, Grimlock. A couple of different sword options. You see one like a smooth edge and uh, one with some Grimlock details in there. You see a little crown and a G. Pretty cool stuff. He's got his uh, crown. Uh, this kit, obviously, an upgrade uh, for the Studio Series 86 Grimlock. Uh, it comes with a throne, uh, uh, fully assembled. I like the nice little uh, King Grimlock detail there in the back of the chair. Uh, I like all the, the, the kind of Cybertronian details he's got uh, penned into the sides. And you can see on the back here, the KG for King Grimlock, as well as a, a holster for what looks like swords. You can see there the uh, the mounting points for those uh, those extra swords. He's also got these cool shoulder pads made out of my favorite characters, the Sharktacons, um, and a nice little perch for Wheelie to, to sit on, uh, peg hole included. There's a, uh, a closer look at those shoulder pads. Made out of fallen Nas, discarded Nas, if you will. I like the gold and green color scheme. I think it's a really nice choice. It works well for Grimlock. And you can see the different blade options um, and how they look uh, with uh, with Grimlock there. The crown, the shoulder pads. I like how it plugs into the shoulders too. It's pretty sharp looking. It's a nice addition to uh, to anyone who felt that Studio Series Grimlock was just missing a little bit more. On Iron Factory, um, we have some Iron Factory samples on display. Um, like we have the Last Prophet out there, which is a retool of their Scourge. Um, a really cool look at Alpha Trion. Um, and it looks like this is pretty much ready to go. We should be shipping out shortly. Um, Tyrant's, Ring, Tyrant's Wing Fantascope and Desert Rose. Fantascope just came out, and uh, Desert Rose isn't too far behind. Uh, that's obviously the, the G2 Sandstorm. Uh, Bay Razor uh, is also another prototype that's out on display right now. Uh, their their homage to a G1 Beachcomber. I think it's looking really sharp. I like the buggy mode, and I like the details on his chest. Anyone unfamiliar with Iron Factory, they're legend scales figures. They're very small scale, uh, but they have a lot of articulation. There's usually different face options, different hand options, like a closed fist, an open fist, a pointing fist, splayed fingers. Lots of different things to uh, for uh, you know your display. So here we see surfing arrow. I believe we also have this on display outside. Um, I like his little harpoon gun. I think it's really neat looking. I like that this is a, a pretty neat update to um, uh, you know the the old tried and true hover uh, hovercraft. Uh, the hometown watcher is uh, their version of G1 hover and their IDW pipes. Uh, you can see, I mean, they're they're similar, but their alt modes and uh, robot modes are are pretty noticeably different. Um, I'm not even going to try and butcher this one, uh, but that is Iron Factory's version of Bonsai Tron, a uh, retool of their their popular bludgeon mold um, with some different accessories and different head. Their uh, their version of a Black Lyle convoy, kind of a winged horned lion, uh, also out on display. Very cool looking. I love the Samurai series. Uh, it's just it, it's a unique and different take on uh, their typical stuff. The twin twin edge blade. That's their version of uh, Bayverse Drift um, in the uh, IDW covers color story and the uh, Bay films. They also are doing their version of Lockdown. Um, I think that's really cool. I like the the bucket hat. I like his uh, his alt mode too. They're also doing their samurai series in Ironhide, uh, as well as Ratchet. Uh, it's nice to see one kind of the Ronin warrior and one more of a monk. And then uh, their another big one, kind of like their Ultra Magnus, will be Grimlock. Um, not sure what the ET on this one is, but this will also fit in with their samurai series. So that's kind of their lineup for 2021. Um, they should have some 
new information coming out uh, shortly in the next couple of months for their 2022 lineup. Now, I have a new company called Robot Hero. Uh, you would think that Robot Hero might refer to Transformers, but it doesn't. This is actually a third-party TMNT set uh, for big uh, turtle collectors. They're doing some upgrades for retail uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle figures, as well as some very cool third-party mousers. Um, pretty articulated, nice details, and they look real nice with uh, <laughs> their turtle counterparts. Uh, I think, I'm not a turtle collector, but I think I'm going to pick up a set of mousers. They're pretty cool. Going into fans hobby. Uh, big fan favorite. Uh, they've been doing some amazing stuff lately. Um, you can see here they're going to be Starting out with a uh, U.S. version of their uh, recently released um, a hitter, um, MB-13A, coming soon. The MB-18 combined mode, still a work in progress, but it gives you a nice visual idea of how this is going to look uh, when everything's set up and linked together. It's going to have some nice articulation. You can see there the drill hand actually has a hand, um, which is really cool. It's a nice feature that I wish the original had, um, but I think it looks real sharp together. You can see here MB-19, uh, their version on double dealer. Uh, missile launching, mode with effect blast lighting. Um, the vehicle mode looks cool. The robot mode looks really sharp, uh, very clean. I like you can see the, the master figure in his abdomen. And then the bird mode. Um, and then they have a second bird mode to show more of a Decepticon robot version. I think it's a nice twist on the original concept to kind of make it look uh, not just like the the bird mode is the Decepticon mode, but he also has a uh, an evil robot mode as well. MB20, uh, development in progress, coming at the end of 2022. This is going to... Uh, Combined with their MB15, their uh, their version on Armada Optimus. And for anyone out there that's not aware, it's Overload. It's it's Armada Overload. It looks pretty sharp just in that wireframe, and it's going to look even cooler combined. It'll be all decked out with uh, a lot of artillery. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing this one in the future. Um, it was just such an awesome figure back in the day. It'll be nice to see a really good update. But that's not all. That's not all for Armada. Um, I know they have uh, their version of Armada Megatron coming. And with Armada Megatron comes his shock fleet, uh, his tidal wave, if you will. Um, again, also in development, but they've, uh, they've heard all your feedback. They've heard all the, the positives and the negatives uh, that have gone into the Meg Tariano, um MB-17. Uh, and what would it be without his his very cool armor and uh, and backup? So yeah, that is uh, that's wrapping up for for fans hobby. Look forward to more of that in the future. On to New Age. Uh, New Age for those in attendance that aren't familiar with New Age, they primarily do um, legend scale figures, very detailed, um, nice die cast metal. I'm going to start off with Jones, H41, uh, their version on G1 Beachcomber. He's very show accurate. He's adorable. I love his tiny little buggy mode. Just like their Bumblebee and their Cliff Jumper, I think this is going to be a very sought after figure. Uh, up next to go with their Galvatron is Tear, uh, their version of Cyclonus. I think the, the head sculpt and the face sculpt are just incredible. Uh, I love the colors. I love the detail, and if this is anything like any of their other figures, it's just going to be an A-plus contribution to your collections. So look forward to more of that in the future as well. Uh, we have a couple of repaints here. They're upcoming uh, Optimus Prime into the Nemesis Prime colors with that cool cape. He's got his sword. I think it's a, a really nice deco where the, the chest uh, windows just pop with that nice crystal red and that uh, shiny metallic paint and then of course this shattered glass for those in attendance that really like that stuff too i think it looks really nice with all the scratched up details it's a, a nice deep shade of purple 
then a nice G2 version of their Devastator. This has been uh, very well received by fans all over. Um, I like the uh, the G2 tempos. Uh, you can see it on that kind of the under scoop of Bone Crusher. Uh, I think it looks really cool. What an amazing figure. And then they managed to get this to work so well, as well as the toy version of the G1 um, Devastator as well. So uh, lots coming from, from New Age, and I'm sure there's more to come as well. On to Fans Toys. Fans Toys early. Uh, Fans Toys, obviously a huge fan favorite. There's so many amazing things. Uh, they've been doing great combiners. They've been doing great individuals. Um, they released uh, a lot of cool figures last year, like Braun. And what's Braun without Outback? Uh, FT-52, their version of, uh, of Outback. I think he looks amazing. Very show accurate. Sometimes that's a plus. Sometimes that's a negative. I think this looks amazing. I like his, they got his, his, even his boots, like right down to the feet look great. Um, the head sculpt's amazing. The uh, alt mode looks great with his Megatron style cannon on top. It's become a bit of a trademark for him. Looking good from all sides. No ETA in this figure yet. No confirmed name either. But it looks great from all angles. Uh, if you like Braun, you're going to like this. Um, another excellent addition to a masterpiece shelf. On to FT-54 Power Glide. Again, no uh, no name just yet, just FT-54. Uh, but I want you to look at how beefy this robot mode is. Um, I mean, the head sculpt's amazing. Everything kind of splays out the way you'd think it would. But then look at how thin and sleek the, the jet mode is. It's amazing that this slender plane turns into that robot. Um, everything hides away really well. Just a, another engineering marvel. Uh, I think it looks amazing from all angles. I'm really excited to see this one in hand. Power Glide's one of those figures that um, is just, it's so cool to see when it's pulled off um, well. Some different angles. You can see the back panels. It does look like there's a lot of panel folding to kind of beef out that, that uh, robot mode from such a slender uh, alt mode. But I think it looks really good. Um, so hopefully. We see this sooner rather than later. Gives you an idea of the uh, length of his alt mode as well. Uh, it's going to be really cool. FT61, the sweeps. Scourge in his sweeps. Um, anyone that has their Cyclonus and their Galvatron has been wanting this for forever. Um, there are other sweep options out there, but people have been waiting patiently for these, and uh, they are coming down the pipeline. So again, masterpiece scale, lots of articulation. Um, it'll come with a lot of accessories too. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to do a single pack or a three pack or or what, but um, I think this will be a troop builder pack for sure. Lots of nice details. Again, revisions will come, I'm sure, but I like the way that the the wings separate. I like the way that they they fall off to the side. I like it's not just folded up panels. It looks really sharp. I like his his big old claws. And the face sculpt's really nice. Here you can see a space boat mode. Uh, I like how the back end ties up. It's not some open foot. Uh, I think it looks really clean. I'm interested to see how that uh, how that looks in person. Hopefully, it comes with a flight stand because I really like that. I like having these things on display like that is just such a cool look. Pop color, don't care. He's just such a cool looking figure. So we can finally round out that uh, Galvatron posse. And to go with Fort Max, uh, FT-62, their take on Chrome Dome. Um, so with Chrome Dome, that means they're going to be doing the others. Great looking robot mode, exceptional looking vehicle mode. I love the double barrel guns mounted on top. I love all the details on the side and the, the, the master panel on, on the hood. It's a sharp looking mode, sharp looking vehicle. I like the detail on the head, very uh, Headmasters uh, cartoon look. 
and you can see there the transformation of the head uh, core robot into the head. Looks great, uh, and hopefully we get to see more from them shortly. On to Zeta. Uh, Zeta has been dipping their toes into the Legends figure market, um, and they're doing uh, the the mini version of their Superion. Uh, so it's Zeta Superiotron Mini, um, and this is the leader of the team, Silverbolt. Very cool stuff. Their slingshot. I love the head. I love the guns. If you ever had the G1 aerial bots, I mean, they were super simple. Um, and these guys are really, really done well. The transformations are smart. They're clever. And they look really good in hand. You can see uh, Superior Tron Mini combined. I will be a parts former for the uh, the main torso, like the New Age Devastator and the, and the Magic Square Devastator. And even the Magic Square um, uh, Stunticons. Um, but this looks good, so you can see uh, there's two different face molding options uh, and chest molding options. So I think it looks uh, it, it's good options for for what uh, people want if they want the toy accurate or if they want the cartoon accurate. Here you can see them with uh, the uh, three unreleased figures. The first two um, are already out. Um, they're great if you're a Legends collector. If you like the aerial bots, I highly recommend them. On to Planet X. Uh, Planet X has been doing some really cool stuff. Um, they they had a lot of great uh, Fall of Cybertron figures. Um, and they were even doing some, uh, they started their IDW uh, figures with that Grimlock. Uh, here we can see their upcoming uh, PX-15 Pluto, which is a metallic finish of their Pluto figure they released uh, last year. Um, so again, this has a metallic finish. It also has updated uh, shoulder joints and hip joints. So they're no longer ratcheting joints. Um, they're going with a different style uh, from fan feedback. But I think this looks amazing. If you're a fan of the Fall of Cybertron games, if you had the original figure and it felt like it was just missing a little something, I think this is a, a great upgrade. Uh, I love the metallic finish to the paint. It just looks phenomenal. So this will go great with that metallic uh, Optimus that they released last year as well and their Grimlock. I am on fire, did an excellent job of taking these pictures. Uh, he looks very beefy, very menacing, and very sharp. If you have the original figure, that stuff will make you bleed if you prick one of those uh, kneecaps or the little pieces on the back, your shoulder pieces. They're very sharp, deceptively so. Um, you can see that really cool honeycomb effect that the Fall of Cybertron game and figures had. You can see that in the tip of his cannon. You can see that on some of the paneling around the body as well. Looks great with their Trypticon figure, if you have that as well. I like his big, beefy Energon sword. There's Dark Energon sword. The head sculpt is perfect. They did a great job. This figure is on, uh, on display. Those little things right there on his back. Super sharp, but a lot of detail. Um, it just looks so cool to see that uh, finished product jump out from the game. It's very unique tank mode. The gun can mount on top and the sword can mount in the middle. Storage. Very neat stuff. Their other figure that they have out in the display area is Grimlock. And you can see here the PXCO5 Proteus uh, is coming to go with Caucus. Um, not in scale. Um, this is just to really uh, highlight what the next figure is in that lineup so there's no doubt what it is um, again it might not be <laughs> exactly that big but it gives you an idea of who's coming next now we have a new company called bingo toys uh bingo toys are focusing on uh bumblebee movie aesthetics and they're going to start with their take on the bumblebee movie shockwave they're going to call this one bt01 silencer it's an ABS uh, diecast figure, or ABS and diecast, sorry. Uh, height's about 30 centimeters. He's going to have LED units in the headlight, or in the <laughs> LED units in the head. Uh, it's, again, an uh, homage to their shockwave in Bumblebee. Um, stands about 30 centimeters tall, and it's going to have like a, a gun, sorry, a, a worn-out finish on all the panels. 
uh, to give it kind of like that battle-worn look. You can see it here with uh, some of the three zero figures. Um, but the difference is this figure transforms. Uh, it's going to turn into a space gun. Um, this is their take on it. Uh, I think it looks really cool, very interesting, an ambitious first attempt at a new figure or a new, new company. Uh, it looks very close to finish. It looks like it's ready to go. Um, hopefully, uh, we get to see some more from them in the future. I really like what they're doing with this, um, and I love uh, that Shockwave character. So hopefully, we get to see more from them in the future. On to MMC. Uh, MMC, um, amazing stuff in the dealer room right now. You can see their G2 Bruticus, um, their, uh, their Steel Jaw, their first aid figure out there looks amazing. Uh, we're going to start off with a, uh, a recolor of their um, Skylinks. Uh, this is the cartoon colors for Magna and for Inventa. Uh, if anyone missed the old Space Chicken the first time, you have another opportunity in a more uh, cartoon color accurate uh, version. A nice pale blue really pops with the right and the red. Um, he looks amazing. Uh, an excellent, excellent figure all over. So it'd be nice, uh, a nice opportunity for fans to pick up either a second or uh, one they missed the first time. Let's see, R49 Mentis. Uh, we actually have this as an exclusive at the show. I hope everyone got one because it looks incredible. Uh, it's their version of IDW Rung with all of his many, many accessories. Uh, very poseable. Um, what a cool looking figure, especially for fans of IDW. <laughs> so many expressions. On to R48 uh, Optus Knox, their version of a Nemesis uh, Prime. Uh, you can see that really iconic uh, IDW face uh, from a particular scene in the comic. Uh, very, very neat looking. Gotta love a good uh, black Optimus repaint. Comes with a very cool sword. Again, lots of detail. Incredibly articulate figure. A real game changer. And everyone, <laughs> everything and everyone looks cooler in a black cape. Now on to Ocular Max. Uh, this is the last leg of the panel. Uh, this is going to be um, their Perfection Series, uh, Medicus, uh, who you can see out on the uh, on the on the show floor. You can see him at the the Toy Dojo and um, E3U booth. Uh, looks great. Pre-order is coming soon. Um, amazing that that this figure turns into that robot and that van and into a, a, an arm like that. Just the incredible work of engineering. And you can see there he's got a full hand splay, which is, uh, which is amazing. Amazing that it can hold itself up like that. Uh, really looking forward to the pre-orders going live on this. And you can see Ventus, their version of Blades. Uh, Ignis, the leader. You can see his uh, repair base mode, his fire truck mode. He looks amazing. He's going to go, it's going to look real great next to their Combaticons. Navigant, the Interceptor, their version of Streetwise, um, looks incredible. And uh, insert us the Scout, the version of Groove. Uh, I like the, the the piping up the legs. I, I, I find it awesome that they, they managed to get that in there. Um, Overall, very impressive that that robot turns into that uh, that bike. And here you can see the Maximus Pro, the combined mode um, of all of their uh, Protecto bots. And this is the last panel of the of the show. However, we do have one uh, extra treat from Ocular Max. Uh, for those in attendance, you get to see a world premiere um, of a short video. And then that will be live on their YouTube channel uh, after the show. Thank you again for joining us. We really appreciate it. And uh, we hope to see you next show. Take care.